Uh, we're up to uh, Matthew 5. Uh, let me read the first 12 verses. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Uh, doing these uh, videos, I try and uh, stick to one chapter per video. I think Matthew 5 is the chapter that has um, tempted me the most to, to split it up into different videos because there's just so much uh, in uh, this chapter. Um, uh, before we look at chapter 5, we need to think about the, the Sermon on the Mount as a whole, which uh, this chapter is part of. What is the Sermon on the Mount? Well, very basically, it's what the Christian life looks like. Uh, does Jesus want us to follow it? Absolutely. Uh, this is teaching for every Christian. You remember the Great Commission. Uh, Jesus uh, commanded the disciples as they went out to teach uh, the people the uh, they gospel, uh, teach them everything that I have, teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And uh, this is a good part of what Jesus has taught. Uh, does Jesus want perfection? Uh, yes, he does. Chapter 5, verse 48. Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And uh, we might be getting a little bit nervous at this uh, and we might be tempted to just give up. Uh, but no, uh, right at the beginning of the passage, uh, we're looking at here, chapter 5, verse 5, blessed, uh, sorry, uh, chapter 5, verse 6, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Uh, stitched into the Sermon on the Mount is this understanding uh, that we, uh, though we're aiming for uh, to, to uh, live up to what Jesus is saying here, uh, that we, um, we, we won't be able to achieve it. We hunger and thirst for righteousness. Uh, the Lord's Prayer in chapter 6, uh, forgive us uh, our debts. That's stitched into this is uh, the idea of our need uh, for forgiveness and the idea that we won't be able to do everything that uh, Jesus wants us uh, to do. Uh, really, only one person has fully embodied uh, this sermon, and uh, that is uh, the Lord Jesus and uh, we think of uh, Paul in a couple of places where he says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And our imitation of Christ here is given uh, lots of detail as we seek to, uh, to live out uh, the Christian life. So the Sermon on the Mind is not a, a, a sort of law that's being given to us so that we fail and that we um, uh, kind of turn to, uh, to Christ for his righteousness. That there's some truth in that, but that's not that's not the whole truth. Uh, this uh, the, the the teaching in the Sermon on the Mount is teaching for Christians. It's teaching that we are to to read, and to to seek to live out in our lives, even though we know that we want to do it perfectly, but we'll need forgiveness, we'll hunger and thirst for righteousness as we do it. Again, there's so much in this chapter. I want to boil it down uh, with five words. First word is blessed, verses one to eleven. Uh, blessed is one of those words. Uh, that uh, sometimes hard to pin down. Uh, if you're on social media, you'll know hashtag blessed. That's not what's in view here. But nor is the idea that uh, what's being spoken of here are, you know, do these things and God will reward you. Uh, no, it's more uh, the, the language of uh, blessing from Psalm 1. You know, blessed is the person who uh, meditates day and night on uh, the law of the Lord. Uh, ben Cooper has written a very helpful article uh, says, you know, that the language of blessed here is those who are on the path to life. This is what it looks like if you're on the path to life. And you can break the, the um, blessings. This, uh, these uh, verses are called the Beatitudes um, the, into two sections. So one, to, uh, sorry, three to six uh, it talks about the blessing of being spiritually bankrupt. So verse three, poor in spirit. Uh, think of the uh, tax collector and Jesus uh, parable. Uh, verse 4, those who mourn. Uh, Don Carson's described it as personal grief over personal sin. Uh, verse 5, uh, uh, the meek. 
again, if you are poor in spirit, uh, you're mourning for your sin. Well, you're not going to look look down on others. You're going to be meek and humble. And uh, verse six, uh, you hunger and thirst for righteousness. In other words, you don't just wallow and enjoy your sin. Uh, you you want to change. You hunger and thirst for righteousness, even though you know uh, that you are uh, uh, poor in spirit. So there's an idea uh, of spiritual bankruptcy. That's the first step uh, to uh, living the get- way that God wants us to do. Second half of the Beatitudes uh, talk about spiritual transformation. Verse 7, uh, they're merciful, uh, an ex- extension of being meek. Uh, and uh, you know, it's showing mercy to others. And this is a point, I think, in the 21st century where Christians can be different. Our, our culture is becoming harder and harder and uh, intolerant and not merciful as Christians. We can be merciful to those who fail. Uh, verse 8, we're pure in heart. We have singleness of focus. Uh, verse 9, uh, peacemakers to be like God, to uh, seek to bring peace. That's what God does. He's described as a, a peacemaker in uh, different parts in the Bible. And we seek to bring peace between uh, God and human beings. And we're persecuted, uh, verse 11 and 12, on Jesus' account. Uh, we're persecuted um, uh, uh, because we follow uh, the Lord Jesus. So these Beatitudes give us a picture of the Lord Jesus in the first instance. And as we seek to follow him, the picture of uh, the Christian. But we remember uh, historically, these are this is Jesus speaking to the disciples and he's calling them to, to model a, a new humanity there to be uh, like a new Israel, like a new uh, people of God, what Israel should have been. And we see that in the uh, the next uh, section, uh, verses uh, 13 to 16. And we've got two more words there. First of all, salt, uh, verse uh, 13, you are the salt of the earth. And then the next word is light, verse 14, uh, the light of the world. And these are words with kind of deep uh, biblical uh, roots. Uh, the idea of salt, you know, it could be that they're a preservative in society, but there's nothing really in the Sermon on the Mount that develops that idea. Uh, rather, I think uh, we, we look back to the Old Testament and uh, we see salt uh, referred to in the context of uh, the covenant. Um, for example, uh, there's uses in Leviticus uh, 2 Chronicles 3 verse 15 in the context of the covenant that God made with uh, with uh, David. You are the salt of the earth is sort of saying this is who you are. You are uh, meant to be uh, God's covenant community. And then light is what you're meant to do. You are salt. You are meant to be light uh, for uh, for the nations. And so uh, those kind of verses, in a sense, mirror the, the Beatitudes. Who you are, you are those who are poor in spirit. W- what do you do? You show mercy. Who are you? You are the salt. You are, the, you are uh, God's covenant people. What do you do? You are light uh, to the world. And then the, the natural question after that, if we're thinking in Old Testament terms, God's people, salt, uh, their role is light, uh, is, uh, well, what's the role of the law? And that's what Jesus turns to in verses 17 uh, to 20, if they're, in a sense, the new people of God, the new Israel, what about the law? And uh, again, we could spend a lot of time on these uh, verses. Uh, Jesus said he didn't come to abolish the law, um, uh, but to fulfill it. Uh, There's, in a sense, continuity and expansion. And that's what we see in uh, the rest of uh, the chapter. Um, And that's the idea of verse 20, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, unless your concept of righteousness exceeds the very narrow understanding of uh, the Pharisees. Again, he's not he's not saying that unless you obey perfectly, you um, and have perfect righteousness, you cannot be uh, in the kingdom of heaven. That's what you aim for. But again, we're going to see forgiveness uh, throughout the Sermon on the Mount. But your understanding of righteousness and the rest of the chapter um, is the final word. But. You've heard it said, but I say to you, and uh, what Jesus does is he shows the true extent of the law. So not just murder, but anger, not just lust with, um, not just adultery, but uh, lust with the eyes, divorce, oaths, uh, retaliation and enemies. And then it finishes with this idea of be perfect. This this is kind of, this is what we're to be aiming for, uh, living like this with this kind of heart, uh, transformed heart. 
Um, and so uh, chapter 5 finishes with uh, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. But then we remember right back to the beginning. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit, those who mourn. Uh, like um, uh, God's people uh, in uh, the Old Testament, we, we, we mourn, we, we thirst for righteousness. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the wonderful picture of the Lord Jesus we have in this chapter and the wonderful call we have to live the Christian life in dependence on you. In Jesus' name. Amen.